Holy Spirit, we thank you for being in our midst. We thank you, we thank you. The Holy Spirit's doing something different than I planned. I don't know about you. <laughs> There's a great man of God in history, recent history, David C.K. Watson, and he had this poem. He did a lot of exegesis, and he came to this three-segment poem. And it goes like this, all word and no spirit, and we dry up. All spirit and no word, and we blow up. Both word and spirit, and we grow up. And, um, yeah. Last night, we had an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which involved what I would call a very thorough teaching of Pentecost. Fortunately for you, that is available on recording. If you're someone that needs the, the word to support what we're about to do and what we've been doing already, we're going to flow with the Holy Spirit. He says, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it. You cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. We're blowing with the pneuma, the ruach, the breath of the Holy Spirit as he leads. He's the only one that can lead. In power and in truth. Two thousand years ago at the first Pentecost, after Jesus' ascension, there were 120 people gathered in a room. We've got more than that here. And there's different readings and different takes in the inspired scripture as people, as people process and read over the scripture. It's inspired of the Holy Spirit. And what he's inspiring me to say is this observation of that text from Acts chapter 2. It was 120 people that each received a flame of fire over their heads. They each received an empowerment of the Holy Spirit as they waited upon the Lord. There's been a lot of waiting going on and a lot of refining of our desires going on as we wait on the Lord to break in, break through, and break beyond in our circumstances. But it was 120 people, each member of the body of Christ, receiving an infilling, a baptism, an immersion in the Holy Spirit. He draws near to us when we call upon Him. We're told to seek Him by Isaiah. We seek Him with our whole heart and we find Him. This is a time where I believe the Holy Spirit is opening up this microphone for different members of the body to express what the Holy Spirit is speaking through us. So I want you just to open your heart up to what the Holy Spirit is speaking. And we're going to let him speak to us. When he speaks, it can be through a widow with two mites. It can be through a child unexpectedly. When the disciples, those that are more religious at the time, are trying to resist what a child would say, he speaks to those who are newly believers. They've just come to the Lord, and he speaks through them. The demoniac was wrought with a legion of demons. It's one of the only times that Jesus in his earthly ministry told a person to go instantly and testify of the gospel message. He speaks through all of us if we let him. Our brother Doug has a word. and Cher, I'm just going to ask you to... Uh, keep playing through this if you would brother and feel led to sing and so on thank you worship team so anointed this is Doug and he's got a word to share with us um.
Please excuse me if this comes across nervous. I'm used to talking to a group of 30 teenage boys. So um, <laughs> it's a great time of the year with proms going on, graduations going on. Um, that being said, I can't imagine losing one of my kids. I can't imagine losing one of my players. Um, they are my kids. Um, that's affected the Indian River community and a the family there. Last night, a young man lost his life um, in the prom season. So if we can just keep all these young people in our prayers, look out for them, and pray for that community and that family to heal. That's all I got. Thank you. Josh, can you just hold up a minute? Here, I want to pray for you, brother. You can stay right there. Just reach out your hands. This is a heart that's full of love, and I'm going to ask that love to increase as we pray for his prayer request as well. Lord, this whole body is joined together in your will, blessing your kingdom to come and your will to be done in this vessel. We thank you that you're the treasure in his physical body. It's you, Jesus, pure love in his heart. We ask you to increase that love to overflowing May he abound evermore and increase in the love that you're pouring into him. In the name of Jesus, we bless him. And we join him, Lord. We join him in just spreading and sending comfort to this family, the community, those that are close to this tragedy, those that are not so close, that are just disturbed by the tragedy. Lord, we thank you that you are ever-present. You're our ever-present help in time of need. Thank you, Lord, that every weapon that's formed against us, any strategy of the enemy is neutralized by your presence. We bless your presence to be thick about the family, thick about the close friends and relatives, thick about the high school and the school system and this whole community, your presence to rest on this place, your kingdom to literally come and your will to literally be done, your good pleasure to manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, brother. Bless you. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Just just come on up if you've got something. Feel free. Yeah. Yes, um I went forward thinking that and I have gone forward many times for healing in my body and this time It just seemed like the Lord saying to me, don't seek, don't come up here after a healing. Just come up here for me. And that's what I did. Sometimes he wants us to just press into him and be filled afresh with him. And he will take care of the rest. I don't care if he doesn't heal my body. I'm going to seek him first in the kingdom of righteousness. And he'll take care of everything else. I can live. I'm still alive. I'm not totally healed, and I may never be totally healed till I'm with him in heaven. So seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just don't want you to go anywhere. Um, If you can relate to our sister Patty's story where you're believing for a miracle and, and healing... But it hasn't come yet to pass. I just want to, we're going to pray for that right now. Just just by a gesture of faith, uh, put your hands up. And uh, we're going to believe right now. Patty, as you were speaking, I just was reminded of Romans chapter 8. In verse 11, it says, If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, that same spirit will quicken your mortal body. He will heal. And so we bless the same work the same worker, the helper, the healer, the Holy Spirit that has quickened your spirit, has quickened your soul to do the same in your body. We thank you, Lord, for the testimony of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they said, hey, we're going into the fire. Our God is able to deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we're still serving him. Lord, we do thank you that you are our healer, And we thank you for the humility that's expressed in declaring our trust for you, even when we don't see the healing happen. But right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit and the authority of Jesus, we bless bodies to be quickened, cancer to break in the name of Jesus, internal organ failure and malfunction to be corrected in the name of Jesus. 
orthopedic inflammation and joint stiffness to be completely alleviated in the name of Jesus. Those oppressions and those dark spells that af affect our psyches to be relieved in the rest of Jesus. We bless your healing word to go through and quicken bodies, minds, and spirits right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. I, we're going to have some more people sharing, but <clears throat> amen. Amen. Um, is, is anybody feeling anything different in their body just by a show of hands? Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Anybody in the balcony? Amen. More, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I wanted to let everyone know that last week, Monday, my mom had a 14-hour surgery. And God healed her. And she is cancer-free. And is doing amazing coming home today. And that is our God for the healing he did. I thank the Lord. He was with us all the way. To share with you that two of the boys today that went in to get baptized that was a miracle of God um, when they were young their biological father tried to drown them so they were both terrified of water but they both wanted to be baptized and they came today with their dad uh, stepdad and uh, who said he wanted to show his boys how to live and they both went in and they both got baptized and they were both praising God when they got there. Okay, so about three weeks ago I went on vacation with my daughter and the whole time we went to Hilton Head, she kept saying, Mom, you're not breathing right. Mom, there's something wrong. You're not breathing right. Promise me you'll go to the doctors when you get home. So I said, okay, I promise I'll do that. And I did that. And I really wasn't feeling well. Um, my heart rate was over 100. And my resting heart rate normally is 68. And I just was exhausted. So I went to the doctors and they referred me to a cardio and they did an EKG to get the referral. And the doctor said to me, your EKG is not correct. It's, there's something abnormal. So I said, okay. So that Saturday night, I was on for worship. I come in, and in my head, I kept saying to myself, because Jim and I were leaving Monday for another vacation, and I thought to myself, for me to cancel, you know I got to be bad. So I, I was sitting in church, and I was pondering, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? So I asked Pastor Josh to pray for me. I couldn't take a deep breath, and it, my concern was the heart rate. So he, he prayed for me. I did praise and worship, went home, and I got up Sunday morning, and when I came through that door, I could breathe. I took a big breath. It was like a valve got turned. It just a valve got turned on. My heart rate dropped to 83 on vacation. It went down to 68. And we went ahead and went on our vacation. I'll still go to the cardio. I got an appointment, and I'm going to go. But you know what? I'm not afraid. I'm in God's hands. I'm in this church. I'm with y'all. So whatever path I'm on, I'm on. And thank you. God did that. And um, I just want to say that uh, I shared this uh, a few weeks ago. For, for whatever reason, God's heavenly and awesome knowledge that's above my own, there seems to be, when I place hands on people and pray for people with physical heart disease, they, they have tests that show they're wrong, like an EKG, as Christine just shared, or there's lab values that show that a, a heart attack just happened and, and so on. These things that they've been diagnosed with, 
many of them just get healed. And I, I share that to give glory to God. Each of us, remember the 120, <laughs> they had tongues of fire on them, representative of the Holy Spirit, dispensing a gift or gifts on each of them. We're told by the Apostle Paul, every member of the body of Christ do his or her share. It's, it, I would be wrong as pastor to dominate <laughs> the gift expression in the house. It's good for the whole body to do this. So I share that testimony and that track record of hearts being healed to encourage us to step into gifting that God, we might not know we have. I never knew I had that. I just started, people would come forward with a a heart condition here or a heart condition there and I would just pray for them and and they would be healed. Uh, So I want to encourage you to step out in what God's given you. It's Him. It's not us. Holy Spirit, it's your empowerment. It's your power. It's your dunamis that's upon us. We can't get beyond ourselves so many times, but when you come upon us, you enable us to do the impossible because it's you that is in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, I have had problems with my digestive system. I've had all kinds of tests and ta-da, ta-da for probably 20 years, close to 20 years. And um, it, is, it can be messy. Um, sometimes I have to cancel something or not go somewhere or whatever. It's just always been a struggle. And um, I've always watched what I ate and t- nothing seemed to make any difference. So Anyway, um, it was probably, I haven't had the problem in three months, and I believe I'm totally healed of it, and God is so good, and um, Josh has prayed for me, and Paul's prayed, I mean, if there was a healing anointing up here, I was at the altar for it, and that's a lot of, lot of prayers over 20 years, but anyway, um, God is so good, and I remember about three months ago, Pastor Paul said, he prayed for healing or whatever, and he said, do any of you feel differently? And I put my hand up. And, you know, and it was after I put the, my hand up that I thought, I really do feel different. And that's when I think it all started, the healing process. Anyway, I don't mean to ramble, but praise the Lord. I'm so excited. I, I was a recently at a meeting, and I, um, at the meeting, there were people testifying of similar things. And honestly, as, as an under-shepherd of the Lord, but also still put into bed the, analytic, the analytical side of myself, the scientific side of myself. Yes, God uses science, but it's best used when it's applied in the truth of the word. People were testifying of those types of things. And I honestly, at this meeting, I thought, "Mm, I better be careful before I say and celebrate the healing. And uh, I felt the Holy Spirit just kind of say, be careful about judging. And so I I just said, okay, I can't figure this out right now. But but I know that it could happen. So I I, I let that be my, my final state. A week later, uh, there was documentation coming out about some of those profound claims at that meeting actually coming to pass. The miracle of diabetes being healed. The miracle of chronic internal issues and pathologies being healed. Cancers documented in the the Lord, uh, the Lord uh, allowing that testimony to come forth. So I just bless that. I bless that testimony. And I thank you, Lord, that you are the creator of joints. You're the creator of cartilage. Even though there may be metal in our bodies, you're the one that quickens. You're the one that loosens. You're the one that rejuvenates and renews and refreshes. Later on in chapter 2 of Acts, verse 38 and 39, it says that, The Holy Spirit 
Peter said, would come upon people. This generation and the next generation, the children, and as many as the Lord our God will call. Some people look at the book of Acts as just a book of history, but it's included with the other 65 books as inspired, God-breathed by the Lord. There is theology to be gained in the book of Acts. There is precedent of the Holy Spirit moving that he wants to fulfill in our midst today. I want to be faithful. Who else has something to share? Sue. Yeah. Bless your sister. Um, it's kind of at least a half miracle that I'm up here because I don't like talking in front of a lot of people. Um, <laughs> um, the poem that Josh quoted um, really struck me first part, all study, or all word and no spirit. And I, I love to study. I could be a lifelong student if I had the money for it. Um, but I'm not so good at, at um, letting the spirit flow through me. So um, that just really touched me that that's definitely an area I need to work on. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. Bless you, Sue. I think your faith, it, it's, um, it's the Lord that just gave you that faith to step up here. And I just want you to reap bountifully what you've sown bountifully. Those who sow in tears <laughs> will doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing their sheaves with them. Yeah. Bless you. You got more? I never, I never finished, and I think this is important for people because it was important to me. Um, way back in the summer, um, Janelle prayed for me about all that. And um, she said, what you need to do is, you know, you need to put your hand on wherever, you know, there's an issue. And you need to, you need to bless that, you know. I bless, you know, every day I bless my digestive system. I bless my broke my shoulder I bless I bless you bones I bless you bones you know and do that and she said because we ha we have a certain amount of authority over our body and so I think that's made a big difference and I just I want you all to know that I, I mean you probably do but if you don't then you do now amen, amen. That's good. That's a good word. One of the verses that was quickened to me um, in, the, in the water baptism for one of the people, one of the kids being baptized, Jesus in his first recorded sermon, he quotes Isaiah and he says, the spirit of God is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, that's desperate people. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And the, um, the uh, little person I was praying for, I know, has a, has a broken heart, had a broken heart. And, and so I believe that there's people here. You've outgrown, physically outgrown a heartbreak, but you're not over it because it keeps showing up. But Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. Heal. In Proverbs 4, he says these things. And this is what I think Josh has been saying. He said, the word of God, the word of God isn't just what's on the page or on the screen. The word of God is what Holy Spirit is speaking to. We believe it's consistent with what's on the page. But we hear it sometimes in a very picturesque way in a very visual way and he says my son applies to daughters give attention to my word all modalities all forms antenna up receive incline your ear to my sayings 
Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. So when the word of God heals the broken heart, I believe the word of God is healing broken hearts and broken bodies, health to all their flesh. So in Jesus' name, I just bless whoever you are. And and it could be a lot of us because I I think it really could be everybody in many ways. So, but God, that you're the healer of the broken heart, but the heart has to open. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If I'm not opening, you're waiting. And so, Father, I bless those that have been through heartbreak. I bless those hearts to feel, to, to, to not just die and not be dead and not be bruised and not be hidden, but to come, come back to life in fullness in Jesus' name. To open, to open, to not be held back by the fear of the old pain, but to open, open, open in a fresh way. To open. And for that word, that simple word that you say, you heal the broken heart. Jesus, you said it, and I believe the bullseye, the center of the gospel is healing brokenhearted people. The center of the gospel is delivering from sin and healing broken hearts. So in the name of Jesus, I bless hearts to receive today. I bless the walls to come down, not willingly, willingly, not, not because God just beats you up and forces his way in you, but it's time, it's time. It's time for you in your heart to say, here's God, here's my heart again. It's still broke. It's still broke. I know it's still broke. I'm so sorry to confess it. It's still, still broke, but you're my healer. And Lord, that you would let the word of God that promises that to us come alive today and wash over us in such a way it brings life not just to our soul, our heart, but in the name of Jesus the name of Jesus, sickness that's attached to that broken heart, I speak it to come down, come down, and healing come in those bodies, come up, come up, come up, aches and pains and bitternesses and all kinds of diagnosis, come down because it's attached to the broken heart, and today Jesus heals that broken heart in Jesus' name, in life. Issues of life come alive. Thank you, God. Anybody feel that today? In some way, I I bless that in Jesus' name. I bless that in Jesus' name. The, uh, the prayer team goes into the prayer room and prays. And when we were in there today, I felt God was speaking to me about the move of the Spirit and how much he wants us to flow in the move of the Spirit. And so I started thinking, and Pastor Paul talked, or Pastor Paul talked about people that need healing. There are people that have been healed. God wants you to flow, move in the Spirit. Pastor Josh talked about uh, people receiving the gifts and moving out and stepping out in the gifts. So I looked at that as a confirmation of what God was speaking to us, that he wants us to begin moving in the spirit. John 3, 8 says, the wind blows where it wishes and we hear the sound of it, but we can't tell where it comes from. We can't tell where it's going. So you can feel the nudge of the Holy Spirit. You don't know where it's coming from, You you really can't go, and if the wind's strong enough, it's going to push you if you're not, if you don't plant your feet in really hard and resist it. You just go with the wind as it pushes you. You're like a kite or a sailboat. Sailors in the the, uh, 1400s, 1500s discovered something very interesting in the ocean, currents. You get into a current, and it can take weeks off of your journey. 
God wants us conscious of the current. God wants us conscious of the wind blowing the direction we need to go because he wants to use every single person. If you still feel you're broken somewhere, it doesn't matter. God uses the broken. He doesn't use the perfect because what need is a perfect person of God. Amen. Um, so I'm, I'm, we're, me and my wife are very new, new to the church, new to the community. Uh, we have, we have, uh, we've struggled in, in our life and different things. And, and I feel this morning as, as we were talking about Pentecost and, and this renewal of, of the Holy Spirit coming down and you could feel the Holy Spirit coming down on these people being baptized. You could feel the Holy Spirit coming in. And then as, as I watched videos this weekend in Houston, the storms that were blowing windows out and as they were replacing the windows during service with screens and I'm thinking the Holy Spirit is drawing down right now. The Holy Spirit wants to blow these windows out. He wants to come down upon all of us. He wants you to be here in everything we do. He, he's calling us to pray. And, and, and when they talk about speaking in tongues, I think we take that always as, you know, speaking in, in a different language. But I also think it's speaking in tongues when you go to pray for somebody, that they understand what you say, even though you don't understand it. You, you're praying for somebody, and I, and I call on each of you to pray on people. So not that you understand it, but that they understand it. That they understand what God is, is doing in your life and in theirs. And, and the Holy Spirit is just, it's a rush right now. You can feel it. You can feel it in this church. You can feel it in this community. You can feel it everywhere. And I'm calling on you right now to stand up. Stand up for the Holy Spirit. Stand up for the Lord. Let the, the winds of the Holy Spirit come down on this church. Let this just, just raise right up. Let that flame come down on you. Let it come into you right now. Right now. And as Dave said, we are new in this church. Um, and we've been wandering for three years. And he told me that the other day. And I'm thinking, we didn't, haven't been wandering for three years. And we haven't found a pastor because of our hurt and our disappointment. But I, when I was watching the church today, because that's what I became, a watcher. I felt like the Lord said to me, the spirit of the living God is upon the old and upon the new. And I don't know anybody here. I can honestly say that. But there's a couple. I'm an encourager because God has given me that gift. But this couple right here, the gentleman in peach and the lady next to you, I've watched you serve God since I was 16 years old. 16 years old. I believe you owned a bookstore. Your parents owned a bookstore. And you've been generation after generation after generation. And your, and your God has not forgot about your children. They haven't forgotten about your children. I don't know you. I would like to know you because you've been faithful. And you might think that you haven't been faithful, man, but you've been faithful. And I tip my hat off to people that are like that. And I'm a watcher. Trust me. I notice everything. And Becky, I don't know you neither. But I can just say this to you. I'm glad you're my pastor. And Cheryl, Cheryl, I'm glad you're my pastor's wife too. And Josh, I don't know you neither. But what I do know is I know integrity when I see it. And Paul, I don't know where you are. But I know you started this church. You've done a good thing. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. And thank you for always loving my sisters. He hasn't given up on the old people. Amen. 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 Bless you. 
I think that's what we call a Holy Spirit-led christening to the body, the local body here. We welcome you. We welcome you, Dave. I didn't catch your wife's name. Peggy, Dave and Peggy. Bless you, Dave and Peggy. We so welcome you and what God is doing in your lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on up, brother. <laughs> Jim, Jim, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I had a great walk with the Lord, and I, I thought I was following, I got a little misplaced, and then the devil started beating me up and breaking bones and taking things out. You heard about the last one. He tried to send cancer this way, and everybody was wishing me well in the new land, and that went on. And then I was still left with that fear. I, ha I wanted, I got the lust again to go out... I do. I, I only know one place where Jesus said, pray to the Father to heal people. It was always, you 12, go out and heal and then teach. It was a 72, go out and teach. The Great Commission says, and those that believe and are baptized will lay their hands. It is each of our responsibility. I try to grab a hold of that. And, and that fear is starting to tear away. And this Saturday was such a rip. Okay. <laughs> I can't throw it anymore. But but somebody from a month ago I laid hands on and, and not completely healed, but he's free. And then on the way home, a brother so blessed me. We had a healing service in 2016 and, he, and we prayed for this pastor who was headed off to the promised land. Yep. She wasn't even going to come that night. She wasn't going to come because her pain was so high. She didn't want to disturb what was happening in her church. <laughs> Amen. So the brother tells me, we know, Sue, Sue's a great journaler. For those who don't journal, find a wife who'll journal for you. No, that's not what I mean. <laughs> but, but, but that's what we we figured out who the pastor was and when and this brother told me that that pastor got completely freed of that cancer and that just that just makes you know we're doing it here it's what's got to happen but it's got to be everybody and and if you don't have the boldness the boldness to do that then get up behind somebody and say go go brother do it spirit all right all right i just want a little coat I love Bob. I love Sue. They're one. <clears throat> In Acts 2.13, this is appropriate, brother. Acts 2.13, people were observing what was going on. You spoke to it, Peggy, the watchers. And they decided to judge what was going on, and it said they were mocking them, saying they're full of new wine. And Peter responded with the word, quoting from Joel chapter 2. This is what Joel prophesied. It shall come to pass in the last, ga last days that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. There will be signs and wonders in heaven. Brother, I just want to publicly bless all that God is doing in you. And through you. It's okay if it looks a little crazy. Sometimes we need a little crazy to come upon us, just as David, and we're undignified. And we become in his presence humble to receive grace. And I want to testify there are different gifts in this house, but this brother in our private talks, he has a track record of healing anointing and it's nothing he's asked for it's nothing he sought he just wanted to be in the Holy Spirit and he started stepping out in faith and it was awkward and when the Holy Spirit comes upon us there is such a thing as being undone in his presence Old and New Testament Isaiah fell prostrate before the Lord 
in his presence and he was undone. End of the book in the New Testament, John falls prostrate before the Lord in his presence. I bless the presence of God about you, brother. I bless you to prosper, spirit, soul, and body, and to function in the truth, the power, and the love of Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes, Third John 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper and be in health as the soul, pros- as the soul doth prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to let Jim come, and then Fred, you're next. Well, first, I'd like to thank Pastor Cheryl, because as my wife and I were standing back there, she came back and said, I really think that what um, Jeremiah was saying is for you, and that you really need to come forward. And it was actually a confirmation of what God was speaking to my heart, that I really needed to come forward, but I didn't want to. And if you can hold this just for a moment. Yes. I wear glasses. These glasses have been my bane because they keep sliding down my nose, you know. When they adjust the ears to be tight enough, it digs into my head. My wife kept saying, well, you need to get one of those fancy little things put on the back to hold your glasses on. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. So... Because I'll look silly. And that's, that's something I've dealt with most of my life, is a fear of looking silly. Just fear. fear. I grew up in fear of people. I didn't, you know, I, I love to work on machines, I love to work with plants, I love to work with animals, I don't want to work with people because I'm afraid of the emotions. I'm afraid of dealing with the emotional level. I just, I don't. I don't do well with that. You know, and in a way, acknowledging I needed this to hold my glasses is like, okay, I've got to face those fears. I've got to let that, I've got to let God release that hold on me so that I can become more effective, so I can reach out to people. And it's not easy. You know, I would love to be, I would love to be flowing in the spirit. I'd love to be flowing in prophecy and and tongues and stuff. And I'm afraid. And I wonder how many of us are all afraid. I mean, how many of us can name 10 things we're we're confident in? And then how many can easily name 100 things we're afraid of? You know, and and that's, most of us are in that place. And God wants to break that. He wants to release us from that fear. If we're released from the fear, we can then be effective in ways we never imagined. And we can change people's lives. If you think about the, you know, you think about all the all those things going on in our country and in the world, almost all of it is rooted in fear. And Christians have become wrapped up in fear. They're afraid of going forward. They're afraid of, of stepping out. They're afraid of the future. They're afraid of what they might face. And God's saying, don't be. Because there's a world that needs you. We have, a, we have you know, we, more and more you hear about people talking about getting counseling. Because they're dealing, you know, they have fears. They have things that are gripping them and controlling their lives. God wants us to be released from fear so we can reach out and give them the key to be released from fear, which is Jesus. There's a gift of exhortation, and you have it, Brother Jim. (laughs) That's a really good exhortation. I would add on to that teaching, among other gifts that you have. There's an inverse correlation between love and fear, according to 1 John 4. You can't will fear away. I've tried. Maybe you've tried harder than me, and you've found the same thing. You can't build up enough willpower to push it out. 1 John 4 says, it's the love of God that knows no fear. Where the love is, it pushes out. The love of God pushing out the torment of fear. 
So my prayer as a follow-up to that anointed exhortation is that his love would settle deep in our hearts and that he would do the work by his grace of pushing out the fear. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're the great convincer. You convince our hearts of the things that we're holding on to that lead to fear and partnering with anxiety. And your love overwhelms us, instilling a permanent sense of rest and security in you. It's the real love of Jesus. It's your love, Lord, on the cross for us, laying your life down for us that causes us to fear no more. That love goes deep in our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, praise God. Praise God. Fred, please. Bless you, brother. I appreciate you. Well, one of the things I... I was born in Watertown a few years ago. And uh, I love the North Country. God help me, I love it. I love each one of you because there's something of the Lord in the little things. We're not all smart. We're not all clever. We're definitely not all good looking. No offense. But what we are is the North Country is real. i got to say that. It's something I've been around. I love this place because the people are real. They will tell you what's going on. And God is a generational God. So the plan he had, this place came into being, not just on their own, but the prayers of other churches that don't even exist now, generations ago, prayed for what we are now walking in. And we are moving into a moment of power that is God's time. But it's not just you and me. God's focus, big surprise here, is on the children. Because the enemy out there is killing kids, and he's very busy doing that. And God has declared this house and said, no, this far and no further. This is my covenant generation. These are my kids. You cannot come. You back off. I will sustain them with my word. And I will give the parents a sustaining word when they are in turmoil, when they don't have answers. He's going to speak into your heart and breathe life. And there's one more little aside. I love Janelle. And I just think God is moving in power, and I'm waiting on her to come back because I think she is a generation. Look at you. We're generational, right? It's not just the parents. It's the kids. She's got something to bring here, and I just want to prepare you. It's going to be really cool. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. He is building oneness. He prayed, Jesus, in John 17, he prayed that we would be one with the Father as he is one with the Father. And that oneness doesn't just cross races. It doesn't just cross denominations. It crosses generations. Thank you, Lord, that this is a house of multiple generations that are growing in oneness. We thank you and we bless the wisdom that comes from the older generations. We bless the vigor and the zeal and the passion that comes from younger generations. And we bless the childlike faith of the littlest ones to be expressed in this place for the full, consummate edification of the body of Christ in love. We bless your fulfilling, your finishing work, and your completion, Lord. Your perfecting of all the things that you're doing. We bless your good pleasure to be done in this place as it is in heaven. To be done in this region and in all churches that lift up your name. We bless your holy name. We call you healer. We call you our peace. We call you our provider. We call you the ever-present one, the Lord, our righteousness. We call you the one who sanctifies and sanctifies completely. We thank you, Jesus, for moving in our midst. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Can you make it up here, sister? Yeah. Yeah. I'll come... I'll meet you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, praise God. I wanted to speak to fear. And fear kept me back there. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. God has a plan for each and every one of our lives. And fear.
here for so long kept me bound. It still does sometimes, you know. But God's been speaking to me. For me to get up there and sing, that is conquering fear every day. And sometimes I got my eyes shut because not that you guys are fearful or anything like that. I don't want to look at you. But um, the fear, I, I get over that fear one step at a time, one hurdle at a time. But God's been speaking to me. Get over yourself. Get over that fear. Get up off your butt and go talk to this one. Go talk to that one. Do a smile. Start out small. Say hi. How you doing? Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your fear. Get out of your box that you put God in and walk it out. We are supposed to be God's hands and feet. When are we going to do it? There are so many people that are lost and they're going to hell. And they're just so... They're just so lost. They're just so hurting. And we have what they need. And we have to reach out and grab them, pull them back from the depths of hell. Would it be your grandkids, your kids? I don't care who it is. They might not hear you, but they might hear somebody else. They're serving the Lord. Walk out your faith. One day at a time, one step at a time, one smile at a time, one meal at a time. I don't care what it is. Walk it out. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Philippians 2 tells us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That's what she's doing, and that's what she's encouraging us to do. We thank you, Lord. Charmaine, I just want to bless you and other intercessors in our house. Those tears of heaven that come into, it's it's God's heart being poured into the hearts of our intercessors. And the tears come, and it's been said that revival doesn't come from wise or persuasive words. It comes from holy tears, the tears of of God being poured out in his saints, an unction and a desire, a fervor and a passion for those who are lost. God, open up the eyes of our hearts to see like you see. Open up the capacities, enlarge the capacities of our hearts to feel the anguish, the sadness, and the yearning that you feel how you yearn jealously for souls. Holy Spirit, empower us this day with a yearning, a holy yearning for those in this region that don't know you. For those present today, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, you're the one that Jesus said would convince of the righteousness, of sin, and of judgment. We bless your convincing power to work in those here today that don't know you or don't believe in you. We release any expectation of what that would look like to come to faith in you. We bless the free flow of you, Holy Spirit, to convict and convince the way you want to convince, as you've already been doing, but you to continue to do so as we leave here today and as we move forward with the day. But we're not done yet. Some of you may be, but I don't feel like the Holy Spirit is. If you need to go, you can. But I just want to leave the floor open. Who else has something to share? Amen. Brother Jim, you come ahead. Hey, little guy, you can come next if you like. In the last days, men's hearts are failing them for fear, but not here, not there, not there, not there, not there. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. Today is the day of salvation, salvation, sozo, healed, delivered, made whole and preserved. He won't let go. He came to tend and to keep us. And he has put it inside each and every one of us. We were born of the Spirit of God. It's in there. 
It's in there. I used to be so fearful to talk in front of people that I would stand in front of people and cry until I couldn't cry anymore. And I'd open my mouth and I'd just cry. But no, Jesus Christ put that out of me. He put himself in me. And he's in each and every one of you. Step past that fear. Feel the fear, as Susan Jeffers says, and do it anyways. You know, if you feel the fear, you know that's not coming from God. That means the devil's trying to stop you. That means that if you feel the fear, that means go. Feel the fear, that means go. Let it out. Wow. Amen. It's been said many times before this house, outside of this house, and inside this house, that faith is not spelled F-A-I-T-H. It's spelled R-I-S-K. But I want to encourage you. There's some risks we can take without love in our hearts. The first apostles, the 120 men and women, all of them, in the upper room, received an empowerment of the Holy Spirit that made all the difference. We can step out in our own strength, and and Brother Jim agrees. He just shared this. I'm just dovetailing on it. He agrees with this. We can step out in our own strength and will that fear to go. We can will that anxiety to go, and it will not go because of something love hasn't touched in our hearts. It can be said that there are some good advantages to feeling a sense of apprehension. We might call it fear or anxiety because it's a warning signal, just like you would get a cut and then your body would tell you, okay, that hurts. I'm going to put a Band-Aid on that. But when we go to the part of continually partnering with anxiety, continually locked in the throes of fear, it can become so, such a permanent feature in our lives that we sometimes get blinded to it and we see this is the only way that I can live. <laughs> and there's certain things that we don't even have faith for that the Holy Spirit would come upon us and give us faith for to break through the barriers of fear and anxiety that have plagued us for too long. I again pray, let the love of God come down upon us. I believe that's what it was, saints of God, when the Holy Spirit came in. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God is love. Jesus ascended and said the helper would come. The helper is a bearer of love. He is love himself pouring out on the 120 and pouring out on us today. I bless all the ways that you are pouring your love out in our atmosphere, in our hearts today, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Bless all the ways that you'll continue to in Jesus' name. Hey, buddy, you got something to share? Yeah, all right. I have something to share with you guys. Chris did so much good today to baptize himself. Mm-hmm. Yes. It is good to encourage one another. Uh, Becky's telling me, my junior Holy Spirit. (laughs) Yes, you are. We'll have a holy argument after this. (laughs) It's all going to be roses and rainbows and we talk after the service. (laughs) Grace. Kids, um, parents, if you could go pick your kids up now if, if they're not already coming. The younger kids especially in the uh, upper room. Yeah. I want to leave room for more people to share as the Spirit's feeling uh, leading. One of the costs of Pentecost is waiting on the Lord. 
in Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Catch me, Americans. I'm, I'm going to say Christian Americans, but sometimes the American impatience and the American agenda gets in the way of what the Holy Spirit is doing. They waited 10 days as Jesus told them to in Acts chapter 1 through 4. 1, verse 4 and following. He said, wait for the promise. I'm not going to make you wait or try to manipulate you to wait in our atmosphere today. But I want to encourage you to have a permanent rest in him. That word wait is a Greek cognate in the same word group as when John says in chapter 15, abide in me. It's the root word meno, which means to find a permanent place of rest in him. It can look like literal sitting, literal laying down. It can look like being in the workplace or gardening at home, finding that place of permanent continuation in his presence. It's a grace that comes upon us as we wait upon the Lord. And as Americans, we set aside our agendas. We set aside our expectations that are birthed in carnal desires for our money, for our time, for our family even. It's putting him first, just as Jesus said, he who comes to me must put me first. He uses the word hate his family member If you don't hate your family member, you do not love me. And he's not saying hate as we would on the surface interpret it. He's saying relative to anything else, any agenda that could be money, time, family, talent, time, treasure, anything in this world. He's saying relative to that, I come first. When we find our rest in that place... That's where the Holy Spirit gives us what we desperately yearn for. The God-shaped hole in every single soul being filled by the Holy Spirit. When we stop the noise of the things that we can choose to shut off, whether it's voices, whether it's literal things that are going into our literal ears, or whether it's those things that afflict our souls, asking the Holy Spirit to take those things and give us grace for our ears to open up, for our eyes to see, for our hearts to expand, to receive. You guys, I want you just to stand up just a minute, if you would. We have at least one more baptism. I want you to reach to your neighbor and give them a pinch. And, and don't, just, don't just tickle them with the pinch. Give them one that they feel. I don't draw blood. <clears throat> this doesn't just wake us up in the natural, okay? This lets you know that the person you're touching is real. The day of Pentecost was a time of one accord. The Greek word is homo thumadon, where people literally came into the place of oneness, of passion. It's impossible to have one accord with the Lord if we don't have one accord with each other. And it's impossible to have one accord with each other if we don't feel each other and really know that each of us matter. We sense each other. We care about each other. Pinch each other again. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're going to have one more baptism right now. If you're someone here that's still here and would like to be baptized, I want to welcome you to come forward as Jer sings. But I'm going to release the service this way. Every member does his or her share I want to encourage you as you go out to grab at least two people and just give them a word of encouragement, even if it's just Jesus loves you. But I bet you most of the time when that happens, when Jesus loves you, escapes out of your lips, more is going to follow. Let's be the body of Christ and encourage each other. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for being in our midst today. 
We bless all the things that you have opened up, all the things that you've continued, and some of the things that you've finished today, the healings that have been completed in our souls and in our bodies. In many cases, that's the, that's the way it is. And we bless your perfect work to continue through the rest of this day and into this week. May we rest in your presence in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen. Yeah. Dina's, Dina's, is there anybody else that wants to be baptized? Go for it. I want to say there's a freedom if you've already been baptized and you'd like to do it again. Let the Lord wash over you again. Let his spirit move. In Jesus' name, bless you.